Welcome back all, Daz from Modern Eye Techniques here. Uh, up this week, I am building a PCB LocoNet interface and how that inter interfaces with my LocoNet system on the bench test anyway. Also put a little Arduino sketch together, which we control some turnouts in LocoNet and it can be done train controller. Big shout out to my Patreons out there. Every little bit counts. Link below for that. So without further ado, let's get started. MRT Scale Prints, helping you to add realism to your model railway. We are producing Craftsman quality prints in various scales, including HO, O and N scales. We are proudly Australian owned and operated. www.modelrailwaytechniques.com So what we're going to look at doing here is just a very, very quick unboxing. So just received these from PC Way, which is a PC uh, manufacturing company out of China. So they did reach out to me and ask me to do a video and I received a very small fee for our uh, fee off these these boards that I want to do. So these are the the LocoNet interface boards and I'll put a link to below to who the designer of these are. So there's 10 of them there and they cost me all of about 20 Australian dollars to get them shipped out here to Australia and printed. So quite good value. Um, obviously, he's going to need to get the, the other components, which is probably a similar price. So each board may cost around 5 to $7. So what we're going to look at doing here is we're going to solder one of these boards together. Now, there's not that many components. I'm not going to teach you how to solder. I'm not the greatest solder out in the world. That's definitely for sure. But if I can put one of these boards together, just about anyone can with some very, very basic uh, soldering techniques and very, very basic soldering iron. So I'll just buzz through. One of the boards probably took me, the first one probably took maybe 20 minutes, half an hour to put together, just purely because of there's quite a number of different valid resistors. But once you sort of get a process going and you solder your resistors out and all your parts correctly, you can go through pretty quickly. So you can see I've got the the uh, schematic there behind me so I can just methodically go through to make sure I get all the values of uh, transistors and correctly get the loco net pins all orientated uh, properly. So let's get into it. I'll skip through. I'll do a bit of a time lapse on putting this board together. So this is uh, the finished board. So you can see that uh, I've only added one loco net at this point in time. Obviously you can add more so you can daisy chain them together. The beauty of this board, it can be used as a loco buffer as well. All you need to do is have a little jumper at the, the section that I'm adding the arrow to now. And what that allows, normally a command station acts as the master which terminates the loco net bus, but by adding this little jumper, it activates the rest of the circuitry on that left-hand side of the board through LocoNet wires three and four is my understanding. So what that actually does, it adds a 12 volt power supply with 15 milliamp source and allows it to um, create a LocoNet buffer for the system. Let's go through some of the connections here to, to make this work. So I'm very new to a program called Fritzing. So this is obviously this side here, but I haven't been able to bring a reasonable example of what the interface looks like so um, I've sort of done it in Photoshop so apologies for that so this board is just purely the schematic board it would have obviously all the um, electrical components which I'll put a photo up very very shortly so let's start with we've got uh, the LocoNet connection up the top here that'll go off to the, the LocoNet um, connection on whatever command station you've got. In my case, it's the DR5000 DigiKeys. So this one doesn't need any external power because we're only using it as a pure interface and not um, a loco buffer like it can be used. I will show you that in a, another video. So on the bottom connections here of the interface, we've got a ground. So that just purely goes to ground of the Arduino. Then we've got a five volt feed. So that feeds uh, the power requirements for uh, the IC chip here. And then the ground, another ground off the Arduino comes to power the LED lights. So in my case, we had a red one and a white one. Fritzing doesn't have the white one that I can see. So then the little push button that I showed you. So we've got 
on the left hand side here we got another one that goes to ground and then the way the sketch is set up, we've got one here that'll go to pin four of the Arduino. Sorry, back over to the loco net buffer here. So we've got a transmit and receive. So they're both on pin. So the transmit is on pin six and the receiving on is on pin eight. Now we don't need any power to the Arduino Uno here, but we do need a a USB, which was what was plugged in here. I didn't want to put that cord in because it uh, just made the picture just to look, look a little bit confusing, but you do need some sort of power. So it's either going to be power here to run it, or you can do it via the USB. So what we got here on the screen is the LocoNet monitor within JMRI. I'm not a, a, a big JMRI user. However, this does indicate very, very easily and nicely um, what's happening in the loco net world. It's something that train controller doesn't have and I wish they probably did. So big shout out to the developers at JMRI to, 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 to incorporate this into a great little free program out there. This is not going to be a video on how to use loco net. There's plenty of other videos out there. Of people who've got much more learned than myself. So in short, so what we can look at doing is I've got, I'll inset the video now in regards to what's going on down here in the real, real world. And I'll just, if you just want to cast your, my, your eye to these, these LEDs, actually two there, there's one obviously it's a little bit blown out just purely because it's so bright. So what I'll do, oh, it's now going to the closed, which I've got as red, doesn't really matter, it's just a, an experiment. And you'll see up on the screen here, a requested switch TL, one, which is so uh, loco net turnout number one to the closed output off. And then I can turn that back. And we're now going to the throne. And then we have moved here in regards to going back to the throne position. So where we can take that one step further is, I'll just quickly set up a, a turnout control. So we've got a turnout control here. I'll make it a little bit larger if I can. And I'll put in number one. And we'll go closed. And you'll just keep your eye on the, the LED down here, then thrown. So then obviously we can go one step further with that. And I've made up a very, very simple panel. So I'll just quickly load that panel, my test panel that I've got here. So you'll now see up on this top left hand corner, might just hover over that, like so. And if we just watch the, the turnout, obviously that's gone to, to the closed, to the throne, to closed, to the throne. And you can see how the lights also toggle through here and then I'll just quickly show you, so just keep your eye on the lights down here in the real world. It's currently on a closed mode, and we'll go thrown, which is the, the, the white, white light, and we can just keep toggling through like that. So what this is actually showing is via the loco net, it's feeding back into JMRI. Um, sorry, it's feeding back into your, your command station via the loco net bus, into JMRI, so what it's it's picking up here, it's picking up the, the button on the fascia and it's updating in real time the control point of view, or so the controls of that turnout within your JMRI system. So you can either toggle it via a fascia control, like I'm doing there. You can do it via the soft controller on JMRI or um, within train controller, you can do it as well. And also you can do it off your hand controller. So it's obviously really versatile. I think these little circuits, these loco net interfaces to be able to do stuff within the Arduino world. That's the end of this video. So thanks for watching. So takeaways from this, are I, I got a printed circuit board from PCBWay. I will link them below. 
for the Logan interface. I've also, I will link to the GitHub where the, the schematics for this PCB board can be found and also any code that I used in the Arduino. So as I said, I didn't design this code. I didn't design the PCB. So I will acknowledge those people in the description below. But what I'm trying to get at is if I'm, I'm very new to the Arduino side of things. So if I can sort of manufacture something like these and work my way through using the code, getting it to work into Jam or I or other control softwares, I'm sure someone uh, like yourself can do the same. So if you've got any questions regarding this, um, this opens up a lot of possibilities in regards to LocoNet interfaces and the use of Arduino products. So we can use the LocoNet architecture within the bus to manufacture all sorts of automations through the Arduino world. So also probably what I'll look at doing is I'll use it as a freestanding loco net buffer so to speak so i'm not using so when my 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 remotes and all other detection devices are they can be on their own loco net bus where all my arduino software and hardware i should say will be on a separate loco net buffer of their own or a loco net cable of their own so thanks for watching um as i said any questions I'll endeavor to answer them. If not, I'll find the answers for you. So I'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.